Music Therapy Thursday is on. So if you have a question, you can text us or you could call if you want your voice out there as well. Um, and we try and give you a 60-second session to get you back on the right track. This is our community service. For yeah. A few things that we have maybe fractured. I know what you're talking about. Uh, yeah, we <laughs> the deniability. All right, let's see who got the first uh, one. I got one right here that came in out the 813. All right, what it says, got? for the room... I work at the same company as my mom, but we work at different locations. My coworker and I have been really butting heads, and it's become a very toxic environment for me, and it's been affecting my mental health really negatively. To this point, I wish I could just get into an accident so I didn't have to come in. Ugh. I want to leave, but my mom keeps giving me a speech of having to put up with things and how her, how me leaving could affect her. But what about me? What about my happiness? I don't know. I don't want to cause uh, her any drama, but at this point, I would rather work for two dollars and fifty cents an hour and be happy than making this sixteen dollars an hour. What should I do? I already have another job lined up too, just in case. You okay. gotta make you happy at the end of the day. No one's paying you, your bills, do you but owe you owe that to mama. Yeah, I mean that's a part of that too. Like you, got, you now. do. I mean, you do owe it to your mom if she came through and got you a sixteen dollar an hour job, mm-hmm. and you know you don't want to make her look bad. So you, your exit got to be as good as your come up for sure. You, you, the way you joined is the way you leave. You definitely don't, you know, just quit. And the fact that you got something already doesn't really factor because this is still your mom and you got to make sure it's done right. So they might counter and give you a better situation or something. So use it to maybe come up. See if you can move another place in the company or another area, something yeah, that'll make you happy. If you don't want to be there, don't be there. But I'm just saying, like, you got to do it in the right way because your mom came through. Once you get to the point that she said she'd rather get in a car accident than yeah. go to work, I think she's pretty much done. I definitely agree with you guys about you have to exit the right way. No burning bridges. Don't burn yeah. any bridges. Your mom's Make, still on the bridge. Right, she, right. She's still there, but I don't think you owe it to anybody to put yourself in a miserable, toxic situation and just prolong it. On that. a daily basis, too. I mean, come on now. I mean, listen, I never thought being mean or being toxic or whatever else like that was like uh, something to write home about until mm-hmm. I saw like Ellen lose her entire career over it. So yeah. it's a real thing. Yeah. It, you know, it ain't something that's easy. Definitely. Uh, all right, what we got? Um, I've been trying to get my mom to quit smoking for 20 plus years. Once I finally got pregnant, I told her if she wanted to be around my son, she would need to quit. She happily agreed, and it's been over a year of smoke free now. I just found out she had started smoking a couple months ago behind my back and has been babysitting my son often during that time, and I feel betrayed. I don't want to cut her off from her grandchild, but I also don't want him exposed to secondhand smoke from her clothes or hair. I feel like I can't trust her anymore what should i do i i don't know about the trust thing i i treat it like an addiction and addictions honestly are addictions people gotta go through it how they go through it um but i mean i'm asthmatic because of a lot of the smoke that was around me um and and i mean but that was a different time when everybody was puffing inside of windows with their cars the kids trapped inside inside the house too yeah inside the house or whatever so um if if you maybe make her go outside is that a help is, yeah, you know, yeah. less smoke inside, like smoke outside. Yeah. Make sure you're, make sure the baby's inside the patio door so you can see the baby or whatever. But you be outside, and you know, and I think what somebody said when they were loud, I, but I know it's a different kind of smoke. But they were like have hand sanitizers and lotions and things to clean it up. Does Wash that up. help does that help with secondhand smoke? I think I guess. your mom wants to quit just as bad as you want her to quit. It's just it's just so hard. It's something that a lot of people are just never able to overcome. Now to issue an ultimatum saying that she can't be with her grandchild. That's not cool. I think that you cross the line a little bit. And on top of that, I don't I, I'm not sure, but I don't think the secondhand smoke thing works like if just because it's in your hair, the the baby is now Well that's what I'm saying. Like you don't want your baby smelling smell like smoke. It's, you it's, Smell it, but yeah, maybe gonna smell like they smoke a pack of palm oils. Yeah, yeah. I, I if think you just <laughs> smoke and you're around somebody and then they hug you or something, that can actually be left on you. Not that she would but do that to but the baby. But you're not I'm gonna sniff saying. them. The baby ain't gonna be sniffing nicotine because you right. hugged the mama. No. I grew up with a mother that smoked. I don't know all during while I was growing up. I watched my mom smoke all day, every day, but she never did it in the car. Never did it in the house. It was usually outside uh, in the back patio with a glass of wine or something like that. She never did it like really, really close to me. So she is an adult so you have to let her res- you have to respect if she's going to keep on with that but also I wouldn't take the kid away 
you know, it is an addiction at that's the end a of the day. That's a nasty uh, ultimatum. Yeah, right there. That's, 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 a, that's, that's a nasty one right there. Um, out the 863, it says, for Meredith, uh, since you're going to go get a procedure done, I want to know about what your opinion is other than uh, breasts. What would you go through? I'm thinking about getting a mom, mommy makeover, and I would love some insight. Absolutely. What's up? Is a mommy makeover the BBL? Um, uh, well, mommy lipo. makeover just in general is liposuction, and it's basically like a tummy tuck. You can also add a breast augmentation on top of that. That's very common. But when we're talking about a mommy makeover, it's the extra skin around the belly button, and so they'll I need a mommy makeover. They'll cut like the fupa off basically and staple it together. That's yeah, uh huh. And um, so they'll have like a, a little scar there because of that. And sometimes when you do that, you also get a breast augmentation. But if you're asking me if that's, you know, if that, it, absolutely, if that's something you're interested in, it can be and it is very expensive. Make sure you do your research on the doctor, of course. Um, but I've seen some some great mommy makeovers or the BBLs and all that stuff, and it looks fantastic. Can I say something no, real quick? I, I one, one thing that I think happens is they get these little cutesy names like mommy makeover or, or, or a BBL or a tummy tuck and it kind of lessens the fact that this is a major medical For procedure. Real. That's a big surgery. Yeah. That's a big surgery. Yeah, I know you, well, everything you just named is pretty huge. Yeah. R- right. It, it sounds very like innocent. Oh, you're just going to get a little mommy makeover and you go get your nails done and things like that. But you're going to be out of commission for yeah. a week. Yeah, you could you do ripped apart and stitched back together. Yes. <laughs> like that's you know, If they called it that, it might be a little bit more accurate. Like, I think you're right. Hey, can are you coming in on 11 or 12 for your ripping apart yeah. And, and stitching stitch. back apart. Yeah. Rip and We're going to rip you apart. Yes. 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 Are you here for the rip and stitch? Yes. The doctor is so excited. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Rip and stitch and lane too. We got, man, I just got a message that sent to me about the bomby makeover. It is uh, uh, muscle repair also. Tummy tuck, breast augmentation. Don't have to be expensive, but it's a huge surgery. Lipo. Yeah, rip and stitch is right. Wow. Yeah. I told you. <laughs> it's a it's a lot of work. It takes a long time. It's a long operation and it's a long recovery as well. We, we saw somebody that we knew go through it and um they had a hard time with it. Mm-hmm. And they were down a lot longer than they expected. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. just do your research. We, you need to know what you're getting into. And we saw them trying to act like it was all good, <laughs> walking very gingerly, and you could just tell everything hurt. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, we yeah, it's a all lot. Right, let's see here. Uh we got one. One from Mer- the Meredith MD. Yes. It says, uh, Dr. Meredith, I'm trying to find a good way to handle dinner experiments at my house. Mm. My wife and I have been married six months, and cooking has always been, it has never been her strength. It's always been mine. I handle meals happily, but with all of the mom group making meals for their families, it bothers her a lot. I need to know how to keep her spirits up but not have to eat it. We have, (laughs) we've had some really gnarly shepherd's pie and chicken and pasta in the last few weeks. Sometimes grinning and bearing it doesn't work after a hard day when you're starving. How do you finesse this to make her feel good, but also make her move back? Okay. You're going to have to keep sucking it up a little bit. You better buy some frozen food in case it sucks and that way you can heat something up if you don't like it. I, we're adults though right now. Yeah, like, but like, that's not what he wants to eat. He's a grown ass man. He could be like, listen, this isn't exactly, I, you're trying, you're working on it, blah, blah, blah. But if, I mean, you don't want the man starving at the end of the day. So he has to eat something if he's not going to, if he's going to refuse to eat that and she's working on it. Also, there's great classes you can take well, in I mean, town. Well, but hold up though. That's awesome. Uh, can we just say you don't cook well? So let me cook. Because he said, he said, I want to cook. But she feels guilty about it. You know, okay. that mom guilt. It's like, oh, I'm not really taking care of my family because I didn't do all so the laundry So we all going to get weekend. like salmonella because you feeling guilty because you don't know how to cook. It like, takes, right? But it does take a while. It's not just overnight just to figure out how to cook. Sometimes it takes years and years of experience. Find you a good dish that you got. You do it forward and backwards and just experiment with different sauces. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a brand new like spaghetti with different color sauces now. Like Dobby that. has like Alfredo. two good ones that he can make. His is like salmon and like some else. He's like, I got you. I mean, no, but what what about knowing your role though? Like, all right, I'm in this family. I do I do things well, but cooking ain't one of them. So you take the cooking. That, that he wants it. Why yeah. not? I mean, why let the stereotypes from the other moms mm-hmm. make you 
play a position that you ain't supposed to play. I think it's cool that she's trying to work on it and go outside the box, and maybe it's a little uncomfortable, but you might be surprised because she could improve. That would be like me trying to go out and hang off the roof and um yeah, hang, and hang my <laughs> own Christmas lights like neighbor Ken does. Yeah, yeah, Cause yeah. Because he'd be out there with the Sly Stallone mm-hmm. hanging from the roof with and the all extra that. tall ladder. And I go out there with my little baby ladder and break my neck because I'm trying to live up to them. I'm like, right. are you crazy? I'm hiring my people. I hide. Well, then you better keep going to the grocery store and get her out of the kitchen. Get her out. That's what I'm saying. Like, let her just say, hey, baby, like, go get your nails done. Yeah. Go do this. Let me get on this grill. Let maybe. me do this. And then we're going to have some edible food. Yeah, maybe she can just uh, work on baking instead of taking care of dinner. Be, be the king of the cookies. Be, yeah, exactly. The, the, queen, the, queen of the, the queen of the dessert. The yeah. princess of the pie. The princess <laughs> of the pie. That's what you need to do. Like, find you another space. Give yeah. her that. Try, that all right, that's good. All right, we got one out the 727. It says, I have a suspicion that my sister is having relations with one of my close friends, and they are hiding it from me. The thing is, my close friend has a fiancé, and she has been nothing but nice to me. Should I tell her or keep it between me and him? My sister doesn't know that I know, nor does he. So it's your brother. My sister. Oh, it's, it's, it's so, her so sister that's her. and then friend. I have a suspicion that my sister, my sister is having is... relations with one of my close friends. Okay, there we go. All right. she, yeah. So my sister is hunching with my close friend. Yeah. I would just... And they're engaged. Right. It's not your business. As <laughs> simple as that. Oh, I don't know if y'all ask me. Y'all, yeah, that's what you had to ask you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, mind your business. It's for everybody. Why, why is it? I mean, I know everybody wants to know the secret, but I mean, damn, like, it ain't your business. She's really. torn because the fiance has been nothing but nice to her. Okay. Yeah, honestly. And, and that's why you did nothing to her. I would just keep <laughs> gossiping about it to get out of your system. <laughs> like, don't, don't gossip about it because no, you get it out there. You can, be, you can end up being the source. Yeah. You, you got to talk to somebody about it, Orlando. You can't no, you just don't. keep. Yes, you want to talk to your significant other you don't about, have to talk it. To about it. You're oh. nuts, dude. I want to tell somebody. You want to. Right. Right. You, you don't have to. to. You don't because have to. if you tell somebody now, you're a source and you're a quotable. Well, it's not my fault that it's obvious that you guys are hooking up. That's my fault because I have eyes. Yeah. Meredith, you get too excited about secrets. That's I do. What it is. I yeah. do. So what? I know that you two are hooking up. I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to talk about it with my man. Okay. How about this? Don't get involved. Okay. <laughs> Ignore what Meredith is saying. Be keep it quiet and handle it that way, and let them do what they do. And if it works out, great. If it doesn't work out. You still ain't okay. involved. All right, Doctor Vote. All who say tell the fiance say I. No, 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 because no, it's it's just a suspicion that you have. You could be oh. totally off. Oh, so you switched. Oh, no, 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 no. Meredith is talking about. Oh, all uh, here's the different question. Everybody who says it's okay to talk about this in your household with your friends and your family, say I. I. Yeah, uh, she gonna go around there. I want to ask. No, not necessarily. If it's my sister, you're gonna snitch, but sister. you're gonna snitch by association. You're not going to tell on her. No, you're going to tell would people never, ever. who are going to tell people. No, my man it's would not become do that. A conversation. I'm absolutely gonna take. My, if I'm close with my sister, this isn't like we're not talking. If I'm close with my sister, I'm gonna go to happy hour with her. And be like, listen, what so, is going on? So you saying that there's some some sensitive things that we may have shared with you in the sanctity of this room uh-huh. that you have taken home. To Anthony and shared on our on your pillow talk. That's what you're telling us. That's what I... low key is what you're telling us that you've gone home and broken the trust of this room because <laughs> you saying that you gonna go tell my man. Yeah, yeah, and he yeah. ain't gonna say nothing. So what? Let have me reassure you, told you guys, Anthony, about us. I probably did. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's foul. What do you expect? That's foul. <laughs> That's foul. You ain't know. That's foul. Yeah, you don't go I, home telling everybody, here? telling Joanna all this I stuff about us. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all yeah. some snitches. <laughs> <laughs> pillow talk. That's y'all, right. see, y'all don't be We're talking close. about us on the, spill, on the yeah. pillow. That's close naked like that. nasty. <laughs> what? Yeah. Don't do that. We That's pretty respect. much tell everybody anything uh, anyway. Yeah. 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 What you want to know? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Welcome to the Open Book Show. Here we go. <laughs> Orlando and the Freak Show. Therapy Thursday is a wrap. Hopefully, uh, you get to talk it out and work it out. Because that's what it's all about. All right? Mental health. Yay. 